you can build this in survival. Let's review. My maze is generated entirely with redstone. Any command blocks you see are only to illustrate pathing. It's modular, relatively compact, lost a $10,000 redstone competition to Hangman, and makes for a great time with a group of friends. But I wanted to make a few improvements. First, I wanted to make sure that the maze wouldn't loop back on itself. There was always a small chance that a loop or two could be created with how the maze was built. Second, I wanted to make it really compact so that people could actually build this in their single player survival or SMP worlds. And third, if possible, find a way to randomize the generation point of the algorithm. On to the first task. Because the algorithm involves already opened rooms searching for unopened rooms, if two rooms search the same unopened room at the same time, it would create a loop. And that's a lot to absorb, but basically this could happen. To fix this, I had to figure out the right timing so that any cell in a 3x3 matrix of cells wouldn't be activated at the same time. I also had to consider the time it takes for one cell to activate the next. My solution? Instead of each room containing the clock to perform the search, I instituted a global clock to control the sequence. Then I timed it out along the X and Z axes so that the activation order would be 1 1, 1 2, 1 3, 2 1, 2 2, 2 3, 3 1, 3 2, 3 3. This ensured that adjacent cells could not activate at the same time. Since I had four game ticks between each cell and nine cells to sequence, this meant I needed a 36 game tick clock. After some chatting with Kaizen, he came up with a staggered five cell pattern that achieved the same result. This meant I could increase my clock speed to 20 game ticks, making for an overall faster maze generator that never loops back on itself. First task complete. Now to make it smaller. Because there's no longer a clock needed for each cell, I now have a whole bunch of space to work with. I started by looking for a better way to perform the lockout, and after a lot of messing around, I came up with a really elegant solution. Here, the downward facing pistons are push limited and budded. When the upward facing pistons fire, they trigger the bud, become immovable, and allow everything else to get pushed down. This redstone block here also locks the dropper in the four-way randomizer, so it won't fire if not already opened. It's such a simple and compact solution, it's probably the part I'm most proud of. To keep things working quickly, I embraced using a bit of redstone dust. You could easily make this dustless at the cost of added time to generate the maze, but I figured this was a worthy trade-off. A few other changes to accommodate the new lockout, and wow did this ever get small. We're now at 6x8x6, by by floor included, which is much more compact than where we started. Last is to randomize the starting cell. This algorithm requires that only one cell begins as open. To achieve this modularly, I had to make an entirely new design for an expandable randomizer. See my last video here. I won't go into too much detail about the randomizer, but know that this box got checked. Then I had to create an array for the randomizer, again using Kaizen's instant wire, and a call function. These last parts turned out to be pretty easy. I also had to add a bit to each cell to allow the randomized array to open a room. This makes for a large add-on to the improved compacted design. It's probably worth it for smaller mazes, but not a required add-on. All done, and I'm super satisfied with how it turned out. This is now something that you can easily build yourself. Let's take a look at a few different mazes in action. That's it for the maze. Hope everyone has a good time building this. Thanks again YouTube and have a great day.